Hello everybody, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and co-host for Resurrect the Republic, Dirty Uncle Sam radio show. I want to make you aware, I think this is very important, I want you to meet the man that the FBI and the Oregon State Police were involved with assassinating. This is LaVoy Finnecum. I'm going to play his message so that you can understand just what type of person he really was. Too many people do not realize the type of person that he was. You're going off of mainstream media lies and they take a 10 second clip to try to portray him as being a bad guy. However, you need to understand the reason that they targeted Lavoie and all of them was to stop the message that was getting out. It was to stop the people regaining their rights. Lavoie was a highly respected individual. He was a peaceable man. He was a loving man and he wanted harm to come to nobody, including those federal agents and those state agents that assassinated him. This has been clear throughout the entire time that he's been fighting for rights, but you have to understand it's a double-edged sword. Mr. Fenecum has been targeted by the BLM for years. Mr. Fenecum has been fighting his rights and was getting ready to take BLM to court over his land that they have been illegally trying to seize. So what you need to understand when they assassinated Lloyd Boy Fenecum, they assassinated a man that they saw as the voice of a nation whom people trusted and whom was creating truth being established, truth being shown to people across this nation and people across the nation were listening. He spoke out of the pureness of his heart, not out of greed. And they couldn't have that. So they, they think that they stopped the truth that is going out there, but they just made it stronger. And Mr. Fenecum, it benefited the BLM to make sure that he was assassinated. So here is his message. I want to give you an update. Uh, things are not stalled. Things are not slowing down. I was asked to go speak to a, a meeting with a bunch of ranchers in South Central Utah, and I want to let you know that there's a real spirit of freedom burning amongst those cowboys and those ranchers. It was such an honor to rub shoulders with them. Let me tell you what, they are not going to back down. They're tough as nails, and they will hold their, they'll hold their grip. Um, really proud of them. They will no longer um, be pushed around by the Bill Am and by the Forest Service. And I've, uh, I'm going to attach a little bit of the audio of that meeting. I didn't have it videoed, but there's some audio of it. And uh, I'll attach that to this here. I want to make a couple of points before I do. Um, going out to you hunters, going out to you campers and you recreationalists, this fight is for you too. Believe me, They've already taken the, the mineral rights here, stroke a pin, taken all the mineral rights. If they take the grazing rights, believe me, the hunting rights will be next. Access rights are already being taken. Sign down there on the road, Kelly Point, closed. They just did it. No, no input, no, no, no accountability. A bureaucrat can write that law, and it has force and effect, an effect of law. Um, nobody elected that person that wrote that, that rule. Um, believe me, do you think, hunters, that they, they want you to even have a gun, let alone run around here with guns without their permission, their say-so? Wake up. Open up your eyes. Things are moving. America, you got a revolution on your hands. These cowboys, that was a big meeting hall. It was packed from front to back, side to side, standing room only. Had county commissioners there, deputies, sheriff. And they're all, they're all standing together. 
and they're they're going to stand up for the for the republic. Let me explain this. This is the sophistry and the deception of the BLM. They say, ah, oh, it's not our land, but they they say it's our grass, it's our mineral rights. But they'll say it's not our lands. We just manage it. Let me ask you this. If I have a home, a house, and I say, this is public house, this is a public house, um, but I say, who can come, who can go, and I get to make all the rules, and I can change the rules at any time that I like, and nobody that comes into my house or into the house can remove me. I'm not under the power of recall. Whose house is it? Well, it's my house. I can call it whatever I want. But if I make the rules, I control it, and I am not under the power of recall, it's my house. This is about saving our republic. This is about saving our country, about saving our constitution. And here these cowboys are going to stand up, and they're going to say, no, we will uphold the republic. We'll uphold the constitution. You know, that's what we fought against in the beginning, in the revolution. We didn't have representation. We had taxation without representation. Well, that's exactly what we have here. We have control without representation. It's not the federal government's. That land is not theirs. And they say, yes, it is. It is ours. And uh, the letter they sent me, finding me another $5,000, Mr. Finnicum, your cows are eating our grass. Our grass. Their grass. That's how they word it. Our forage. Not mine. It's theirs. And they and, and they're fining me five thousand dollars on top of the other other fifteen hundred because my cows dare to eat their grass. Where did they get it? Did I buy that from them? I did not. That grass is a grazing right. These access rights are access rights. These hunting rights are hunting rights. Remember, remember re that I shared with you. They've already gone to the head of the fishing game here, Luke Thompson and told him, go get to Mr. Finnicum. Tell him to back down because we're going to take those hunting rights. That's what he said to me. He says, Mr. Finnicum, the federal government could take our hunting rights here if you keep doing what you're doing. They're already threatening. Wake up, America. Well, us cowboys aren't going to back down. There might be some cowboys there over on the other side, or some ranchers on the other side. That doesn't matter. I'm not backing down. Clive and Bundy's not backing down. Stanton Gleaves, him, those cowboys up there in San Juan, Wayne County, Man, I take my hats off to you guys up there. You guys are tough as nails. It's an honor to be there. And uh, Mr. Obama, Mr. Loretta Lynch, Mr. Neil Cornsey, this is America. You don't own and control this. We defy you saying that you can come in here, make any laws and rules that you want without representation. Well, it's a beautiful day. You got things to do. Catch you later. Uh. Okay, that's the first part of the video of meeting Lavoy. I will include for you the link of Lavoy Finicum of where I obtained this from. It is a very powerful message. It has included with it the meeting where Lavoy Finicum was at with the ranchers. It is approximately an hour and 11 minutes long, so therefore I'm not going to record that. However, I believe you owe it to yourself and to others to hear his message. His voice did not die the day he was assassinated. His voice grew stronger. Thank you. God bless you. Stay in prayer for all the people who are in Burns, not only for their protection, but that the Lord pricks in their hearts the individuals who are part of this corruption, places fear in their hearts for what they are doing, because we do serve an almighty God. Thank you, God bless you, and good night.